Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Al Asghir Palace. His Majesty the King reviewed with His Royal Highness a number of local and regional issues and topics. His Majesty asserted that Bahrain is on the right track towards achieving more progress and leadership across various fields thanks to the efforts and determination of its loyal citizens. Referring to the 53rd anniversary of the BDF, His Majesty expressed pride in the landmark achievements of the BDF throughout its victorious march praising the continuous development of its weaponry and military installations his majesty also praised the inauguration of the Muhammad bin Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa specialist cardiac center describing it as one of the milestones that will provide the best health services to the citizens his majesty then hailed the inauguration of a number of new warships and modern projects noting that they are aimed at strengthening the capabilities of the BDF through providing it with the latest military equipment and systems to continue defending the nation and safeguarding its security, stability, gains, and national unity. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for the tremendous efforts he is exerting in serving the homeland in all fields, as well as in leading the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus, praising the successes achieved by the Medical Task Force and the dedication of frontline medical competencies and allied teams for the sake of providing health care and protecting the safety and health of the citizens and residents. Regarding the development of the global pandemic, His Majesty the King expressed confidence in the Bahraini citizens' awareness, effective response, and full compliance with all instructions and precautionary measures recommended by the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus. His Majesty stressed that all the citizens and residents are partners in confronting the pandemic, adding that the Kingdom will overcome it with collective commitment and teamwork. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah. During the call, the depth of the long standing ties between Bahrain and Kuwait were discussed, including advancements made across various areas of cooperation. The Shura Council held its weekly session remotely, headed by its chairman Ali Saleh. The session discussed a report of the Youth Affairs Committee regarding the law on associations, social and cultural clubs, and private bodies working in the field of youth and sports, as well as private institutions. Then the council reviewed a number and, and rejected the report of the Foreign Affairs Defense and National Security Committee concerning a draft law amending some provisions of the Code of Criminal Procedures. The session concluded by reviewing a report regarding legislations that strengthen the food security in the Kingdom of Bahrain. With the start of the second semester of the academic year, the Ministry of Education has implemented distant learning for all students as part of the directives issued to combat the spread of the coronavirus. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid al naimi visited the Ministry's center dedicated to following up on the implementation of central virtual classrooms and was accompanied by a number of officials. He praised the efforts made by the organizers and affirmed that the Ministry has provided, in addition to virtual classes, many other diverse educational means. Dr. Naimi said that the ministry has allocated digital lessons for students with special needs to be uploaded to the educational portal and the YouTube channel. The minister also added that schools have prepared clear study schedules for the second semester, indicating that time allocated to the lessons and the methods applied. The Kingdom of Bahrain has proved its resilience and wisdom in dealing with the repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially in the education field. The University of Bahrain has adopted e-learning systems since 2004 by establishing the e-learning center to cope with the latest developments in information technology and to employ this technology in teaching and learning processes at the university and academic institutes. To speak more about the University of Bahrain's initiatives in this regard, we are joined by the director of the e-learning center, Dr. Sheikh Bint Abdullah Al Khalifa. Hello, Doctor. Can you please tell us about the University of Bahrain's efforts to maintain the quality e learning experience? Hello, first of all, good evening to you and uh, all those who are watching us tonight. Of course, fostering quality teaching presents higher education institutions generally with a range of challenges, uh, specifically at a time when the higher education sector is coming under pressure from many different directions, really. Uh, institutions uh, need to ensure that uh, education they offer meets the expectations of the students and also the requirements of the employers, both um, 
today and also in the future. Um, developing institutions as effective learning communities where excellence pedagogical practices are developed and shared requires um, a lot of things uh, like leadership, collaboration, and ways to address tension between innovators and those who are reluctant to change. Uh, of course, all of these are at the heart of the University of Bahrain strategy and vision. There are several necessities to ensuring quality learning experiences in higher education. And the University of Bahrain has been committed to meeting them all. Of course, one of the most important necessities is ensuring the alignment of learning outcomes with the deliverables of courses so that graduating students will um, have a fully rounded competitive education in the field where they're, in which they are studying. Another necessity is ensuring a quality learning experience to preparing the right environment that they will enable the students to um, learn effectively. The University has been committed to its digital transformation plan specifically nowadays as outlined in the University strategy. Uh, and this has tremendously helped in dealing with the current challenges of COVID-19 and the full dependency on distance uh, online education. We know uh, today that uh, more than ever, all, all sectors, including the educational sector, must go through a steep digital uh, transformation and learning curve to cope with the demands of future markets and to maintain quality of their services. Doctor, you have announced a new tool that's been added to the UOB e-learning platform. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, so uh, as I've mentioned, we are committed to our digital transformation plan and we focused on the path on upgrading the learning management system to its current latest uh, version. Uh, we have also added a few uh, new features in the past, including an exam proctoring tool. This semester, we are focusing on improving several existing tools like the proctoring tool. We are adding a live proctoring to it and also on making the content of the courses more inclusive and more accessible. Uh, we introduced a new feature lately called Ally. Ally is a tool that was uh, initially designed for special needs students to enable them uh, to have fair access to online content. But the tool uh, is now adopted to help everyone across the institution, uh, not only special needs students. Ally uh, automatically increases awareness and provides uh, detailed insight and guidance to instructors on how to improve the accessibility of their course. And uh, it helps institutions build a more inclusive learning environment generally and uh, improve the student's experience by helping them take um, uh, clear control of uh, their course content with uh, usability, accessibility, and quality in mind. Uh, the tool improves the overall experience of the students with alternative formats that provide the students with choices and uh, added flexibility that comes with a more personalized approach to learning. For example, the students can now communicate through um, this tool using the Braille language. They can listen as opposed to read a document in their course. They can also benefit from other features like automatically um, uh, coloring the content of their documents into different colors, formats uh, that could make it easier to read or could make it um, uh, better uh, for those who are colorblind or with, or, or with stigmatism. Uh, Ally also automatically checks for common accessibility issues and provides an institution-wide reporting to help the university administration take measures to improve the content um, accessibility and tackle problems um, in the university. Director of the e-learning center at the University of Bahrain, Dr. Sheikh Hafei bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, thank you for joining us. Bahrain and India held their first meeting at the Joint Working Group in the field of renewable energy. The virtual meeting was attended by the President of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdul Hussain Mirza, who led the Bahraini delegation. Dr. Mirza delivered a speech in which he praised the bilateral relations. The meeting builds on a memorandum of understanding signed between India and Bahrain in July 2018 for promoting bilateral cooperation in the field of renewable energy. The two sides agreed to forge deeper ties in the field of solar, wind and clear hydro hydrogen, share experience and best practices, initial cooperation plans from a joint work team and activate the relevant agreements between the two countries. 
The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, said that 70% of the staff would be allowed to work remotely starting today. He said that the procedure will apply to the staff working, whether at the ministry's headquarters or at its center, located at different governorates across the kingdom. Ahmedan directed all officials to abide by the measures, urging the public to access the ministry services via its official portal, www.mlsd.gov.bh. He pointed out the ministry's readiness to receive anyone who is either unable or having difficulties accessing online services, whether in the labor or social fields. The Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning revealed that it completed a total of 608 houses as part of the cities and villages development project. The Ministry added that it completed the maintenance of 181 houses in 2020 and 68 houses in 2019 and it is currently working on 53 other requests. The Ministry affirmed keenness to work on all houses listed in the project and added that the project is working on providing all resources needed to achieve the goals of the government plan. The Supreme Council for the Environment has set up a team to study the unknown substance which appeared in some areas in southeast Bahrain. Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and SCE Chief Executive Officer Dr. Mohammed bin Dayna said that the team of experts would follow up and complaints forwarded to the council. The team visited several locations today and communicated with the executive bodies including Alba, Edur Power and Water Plant and Babco Southern Municipal Council in addition to some residential areas in southeast Bahrain. The special Specialized team surveyed the affected areas and took pre preliminary measures of the surrounding air quality, in addition to collecting samples of the substances that cause these stains. Dr. Bendana said the stains are being analyzed in a laboratory to find out its components and then determine the cause of its sources and fix any defects associated with those sources. Legal measures will be taken based on the results of the investigation. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation has continued to provide all kinds of support to affiliated families, including counseling programs and the Aman program, a series of awareness and preventive programs aid, aimed at helping families to achieve safety, psychological and family stability, as well as psychological adaptation by dealing with loss and the current changing situations. This program is based on the importance of support for families affiliated with the institution and all members of society during the coronavirus pandemic. Through Aman Aman counseling programs will be provided via social media platforms to spread positive awareness messages to the community about the concepts of psychological safety and family stability. The programs feature open conversation by many educational and family counselors from Bahrain and abroad as well as virtual prevention lectures for families affiliated with the RHF. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced the total number of individuals who have taken the vaccine has reached 182,543. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,561 with 409 recoveries, 515 registered new cases and two deaths. 212 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 296 are contacts of active cases and 7 are travel related. The deceased were a 99-year-old male citizen and a 55-year-old female expatriate. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.